Out there, wider world, it's day whatever of the COVID-19 thing. I just went out for my run, and I'm about to go into self-quarantine again, and I find myself not looking forward to it. It's getting pretty boring. Our place is getting dirty. We're running out of the good food. The good snacks are gone. Anyway, it's depressing. It's depressing for all of us. So I was thinking to myself during my run that I might try to help everyone else make the time go by a little bit better. And I was trying to think about something to talk about, tell one of my, you know, my dumb stories. And um, the only thing I could think of, uh, for some reason, was a story about chemical safety, which is not, on the surface, a very interesting topic, even for science professionals. It makes your eyes glaze over a little bit. But uh, I think this is a pretty good, pretty good story. So I've spent a long time working as a scientist. And at one of the institutions I work for, we won't mention the name for reasons that will become apparent soon, uh, <clears throat> chemical safety was, was pretty lax. And a lot of the basic rules about safety were, were broken. So a lot of these are common sense things. You know, you wear gloves, you know, you don't, you don't handle crap with your bare hands, you don't sniff or taste what you make, anything like that. But um, another one of the rules is that you, you have waste containers for everything that you, you discard. Makes sense, right? And every class of chemicals has its own particular waste bin. Acids go in one bottle, bases go in the other. And usually when you, you fuck this up, you, you typically know because uh, they tend to explode if you mix acids and bases. Well, anyway, around the, hall for, uh, around the corner from us, there was this one lab and they had this one dude who was really, really bad at just about everything in science, but but he would mess mess basic things up too. And unbeknownst to all the other people in the lab, he was mixing pieces of chemical waste. So this lab did a lot of work with nitrates. They used a lot of nitric acid for, for whatever. So they had a bottle labeled nitrates only. And his own work used something else called toluene. Uh, and there should have been a bottle for, for toluene only, but this guy was lazy or incompetent or whatever. So he had waste, he saw a bottle that was marked waste, and he just started pouring his toluene in with, with the nitrates. Now, this doesn't mean much to you, but when you combine toluenes and, and nitrate compounds, uh, toluene becomes nitrated. And if you let it go long enough, the cycle will repeat and you will get dinitrotoluene, two nitros, one toluene. And if it happens three times, you get trinitrotoluene. Trinitrotoluene, T N. T. So, this fellow was inadvertently building a bomb, uh, which surrounded him and his co-workers every day. And uh, TNT was generally pretty stable in a liquid, but as the level uh, of the, the container went up and down as evaporation occurred, uh, this crystal explosive built up on the inside, unbeknownst to everyone in the lab. Well, you know, that's one thing. Um, so, the same guy strips off one day that the bottle gets full and the guy strips off the nitrate waste and he just leaves it out in the hallway and the janitor is that still the right term do you say janitor custodian maintenance engineer whatever it is the custodian guy comes and he sees his bottle and this is really really loose academic stuff but he picks it up and carries it downstairs and uh, he, he takes it out back to the loading dock by the dumpsters and uh, hearing him tell the story later, he takes it and hurls it over his head uh, like an overhand grenade, which is actually not so far from the truth, and it lands in the dumpster, the glass vessel shatters, and a spark is created. The spark interacts with the TNT on the side, and there's a massive explosion that takes basically the entire dumpster and sets it on fire. I mean, this is a big explosion. I'm three, four floors away, and I hear it, along with everyone else. Okay. So, there's a massive explosion. The building sirens go off. Everybody goes outside to your designated muster areas, uh, and we wait for the fire department to show up. The fire department shows up. They get the scoop. Hazmat shows up. The guys get into the moon suits. They go over to the dumpster, which is in full sight of us. For his part, the janitor survives the explosion, even though he was at ground zero. The man has lost all of his facial hair. He had a magnificent mustache. Gone. He had eyebrows. Less magnificent, but still good. Gone. So we have this Mr. Potato Head looking janitor explaining to the hazmat guys that he chucked in this container that just exploded. 
So obviously the first first concern is, is was anybody else hurt? So they put out the fire, uh, and one of the hazmat guys climbs into the dumpster, and he's sorting through it, and everyone's quiet, you know, all the scientists and everybody are listening to see if, if there's any other collateral damage from this. And the hazmat guy calls out for the dumpster, we have a body, and everyone gasps. Holy shit, somebody died. So we think, you know, like, a, we don't know what happened. So uh, they, they send down a blanket to this guy, and he passes up this this body that's like child sized and everyone is fucking freaking out because it's a dead body in the dumpster and the janitor is even worse you know he's bald sunburned face he's got tears running down it and uh you know it's heavy duty stuff and they pass up this this body in a sheet and the fireman has mad guy who takes it looks at it and then he starts laughing and i'm like what's wrong with this guy and he goes it's a raccoon so there had been a raccoon in the dumpster that was foraging for whatever, and it was there at the absolute worst time, and it took the end result of this bomb blast. So the casualties were some great facial hair and one raccoon. So anyway, I'm sure you know, that's the end of the story, but you're probably wondering, no, no one got fired for this. No one got kicked out of school. And uh, the last time I checked, the guy who... who uh, led to the bomb being built and, and inadvertently put in the dumpster is uh, now a professor at a very prominent East Coast University. So, you know, these are the people who are running the place now. Good luck with the COVID, guys.